Good morning, and welcome to the Circle of Worship of St. Stephen's United Methodist Church in Norman, Oklahoma. Whether you are part of the circle that is here present or that is at home watching the live stream or whether you are watching later in the day, we are glad to have you as a part of our worship experience together. And so a few things that um, we share as part of our community. This day, and in fact, um, all of Lent, we are uh, doing a special offering for the United Methodist Committee on Relief. Now, most years, that is the largest special offering collection that we take here at St. Stephen's. People really um, believe in the mission of the Committee on Relief, and we support it uh, considerably. And so th this year, we, uh, instead of having a one-day Umcor Sunday offering, we have offered uh, a variety of ways throughout Lent that you can contribute to the United Methodist Committee on Relief. It, it, um, the funds go for disaster relief, uh, and this year, including uh, resourcing those who don't have what they need to, to battle the disaster of COVID. And so we're giving to both of those uh, causes within the Committee on Relief. So you are invited to contribute to that by designating that either in your online giving or in a, a, a check that you might mail to the church um, so that we can, we can collect all of that throughout Lent, which actually only goes uh, two more weeks. So we're getting to the close, close to the end of Lent. Uh, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And... Uh, we have several special worship opportunities uh, for Holy Week. One will be that we will have some uh, various kinds of prayer stations here in the sanctuary all during Holy Week so that at any point you would want to stop by and participate in uh, any of those, you would be welcome. They will be uh, set up with uh, full instructions and you will uh, know what to do when, when you see those. We will also have a, a Holy Thursday, a Maundy Thursday a communion that will be a kind of an in and out communion service uh, lasting from five until seven. You can come and go at any time and have communion. We will have music playing here in the sanctuary so you can sit and enjoy the music uh, following taking Holy Communion, but that will be on Maundy Thursday. And then on Good Friday, we're having a... Uh, a shortened version of a tenebrae service that will be both uh, in person here in the sanctuary and live streamed. And so if you would like to come and be present for that uh, Good Friday service, you would be welcome. It's at 7 o'clock on Good Friday, or you can watch it on live stream. Then on Easter Sunday, we hope that uh, the weather will cooperate because we're planning on having an outdoor service at 8.30 and then an indoor service at 1050. And so we know that outside will accommodate a lot more people feeling uh, comfortable. Uh, so we hope that we're able to, to do that and don't have any, any hitches in that plan for Easter. Also, um, we have a book group coming up uh, that happens during Holy Week. There's gonna be two weeks of discussion for a book called Scholarship Boy, and we do have copies of that in the church office if you would like to uh, get a copy of that book. And uh, this coming Saturday, we're having a church cleanup of the yard, so our spring cleaning to make everything uh, more beautiful, and we would love to have you join us at 9 o'clock. And now um, I invite you at home to uh, greet one another in the chat box, and those of you who are present here to uh, staying where you are to stand and greet one another.
And now I invite you, if you are at home, to prepare to light your candle as we light the candles here in the sanctuary beginning worship. Will you stand and together we'll join in the call to worship which is printed in your bulletin. The time is coming and now is. Time for love, time for hope. Time for mercy, time for faith. Time for worship, time for prayer. Time for singing, time for praise. The time is coming and now is. Come, it is time to worship. And we will sing together. This is a day of new beginnings, number 383 in the Red Hymnal, verses 1. in reciting the prayer printed in your bulletin. God of ever-changing seasons, as we prepare for this season that is coming, we give thanks for the winter that has passed. The Spirit is moving in the wind, and we see the signs everywhere that you are doing something new in our hearts and in our lives. Call us into the next season, even if we are afraid. Guide our movement so that we might not drag behind, stubborn to change, but embracing the newness you invite us to. For even if the next season is hard, O oh God, we know you will move us through it, and we will emerge again with more wisdom and insight. For we are not alone. You sojourn with us and bind us together. Help us to prepare for this season to come, and bid farewell to this season that is past. Amen. We invite children who are worshiping at home to gather around the screen. As they make their way, we'll be singing to them to welcome them, and Miss Lynette is ready with another great story. to let you know that I've been adding to the library and I've got some really good books for the older kids too. 
and for the younger kids. So stop by. I've got a whole bunch of Easter books on a table out in the loggia for you to look at about Easter that you can check out. Or you can check out some of our new ones. But today's story is called While We Can't Hug. And it's by Ian McLaughlin and Polly Dunbar. And they also wrote a book about this little hedgehog here about hug. So this is While We Can't Hug. And they wrote this for all the children who can't hug the ones they love. While We Can't Hug. Hedgehog and tortoise were the best of friends. They wanted to give each other a great big hug, but they weren't allowed to touch. Don't worry, said Al. There are lots of ways to show someone you love them. Hedgehog tried to wave. That made tortoise smile. Tortoise made a funny face. That made Hedgehog laugh. Hedgehog wrote a letter, and Tortoise wrote one back. You guys should be getting letters every week. If you're not, let me know. And when Tortoise did a little dance, Hedgehog joined in too. Hedgehog blew a kiss across the gap between them. Tortoise saw it, and caught it, and kept it. And then said three back again. They both painted pictures so that everyone would know they were friends. Oh, they, they painted the same picture of a rainbow. Through rain and shine, we've been getting both of those the last couple weeks, they could not touch, they could not hug, but they both knew that they were loved. The end. So remember, we're getting there. And while you can't hug everybody you want to, it's getting better. More people are getting vaccinated, and things will come back. We will come back to church. And you know what? We're having an Easter egg hunt on Easter here outside. After, during, after the children's time, uh, we'll go out and we'll do the egg hunt. So if you don't come, you're going to be getting porch deliveries of your Easter baskets with palm branches and all kinds of fun things. So either at home or at here, we will celebrate Easter together. Let's pray. Dear Lord, it can be hard to understand why we can't hug, be together, especially the younger we are, but we are going to trust in you and in science and the fact that we all want to help one another. Help us to remember that we will be together again. In your name we pray. Amen. I'll see you next week. Have a good day. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving and mailing your checks, giving online, giving of your time and your energy giving through meals, giving through service. St. Stephen's continues to be a faithful witness in this community. Will you pray with me as we ask God's blessings on these gifts? God, we thank you for uh, these gifts that we offer back to you now, for the ways that they allow us to show your love in so many different ways throughout this community. We ask your blessing on these gifts, that we might continue to, in the ways that we formerly have, to show your love, but also that your spirit might lead us to new ways that we can show your love to Norman, to our nation, and to the entire world. Thank you, God. Amen.
Thank you, Caroline. We always love it when you join us and bring music. And I am reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, and I'm beginning with verse 29. In those days... They shall no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. But all shall die for their own sins. The teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their beloved, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says God. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another and say to each other, Know the Lord God, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of life for this day. I think that we have all spent the past year creating a list in our heads of what we most want to do, one of the first things post-pandemic, right? You got your list, you've got things you've written down. Okay, we're, I'm gonna have you share some things, but if you're watching from home, share some of those things in the chat box so that others can enjoy them. What has been on your list of the things you really wanted to do? Going to a concert. Going to a concert. My people. Yes, okay. <laughs> travel, yes. A lot of people put travel on their list. Hugs. Hugs, okay, hugging other people. How about having people over for dinner or going out to dinner? with people, maybe uh, going to a movie or a play. And I know a lot of you had told me back as you were starting to get vaccines, one of the first things I wanna do is go to church where there's my community, my people. We have sing in the choir. Benita says sing in the choir. Sing in the choir, yeah, okay. So the Bible also has a list as well. It was uh, here in the book of Jeremiah earlier in that same chapter, and these are some of the things that Jeremiah said, this kind of this type of list. He says, again, you will take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of merrymakers. Again, you will plant vineyards. The planters shall plant and enjoy the fruit and you will sing aloud with gladness. Then shall the young women rejoice in dance, and the young men and the old will be merry. All sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Singing, dancing, being merry, doing the things that we love doing with other people. These are the words for the people of Israel who had just lost everything. They had been defeated in war. The temple, which was the seat of their religion, had been destroyed. Their homes had been looted and destroyed, and they had been carried off as prisoners to a foreign land. Hopelessness despair and defeat were where they were. They had trusted 
that even if their nation was defeated, that God was going to save the temple, that surely the temple would remain standing. And then they saw it destroyed. The temple was the place where God's words could be found. The temple was the seat of their faith. And then the worst of the worst happened. And their society was ripped apart. We know that feeling, don't we? So Jeremiah's words came to them as a healing balm. When he said, a new thing will come out of this. You will be happy again. You will sing and dance and be merry again. And the words of God will not be lost. The place of God is not destroyed. Because, Jeremiah says, you have God's words written on your heart. God will be present within you, where no one can take that away. Not harsh rulers, not destructive war, not brutal mobs, not loud, bullying, bigoted voices, none of that can take it away when it is written on your very being. He goes on to say, you will know what is right. Even in the midst of crowds doing what is wrong, you will know that compassion is right because it is God's way. Even if you are living in a heartless place, or a heartless time, you are the people of compassion. Because God is within you. It says that several different ways in the Bible. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is among you. God's words are written on your heart. There was that piece at the first of what I read that's a, that was an adage, a, kind of something everybody knew at that time among the ancient people. The parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. It was like everybody knew that, of course. It's even, I mean, it's repeated several times in the Bible because it was a very common saying. And Jeremiah says, well, you know, you've all heard this thing, the parents eating grapes and the children's teeth set on edge. But I tell you, there's going to be something new where you will all be responsible for yourselves and your guilt will be your own, not that which is passed down. But you know what? The ancient people had this saying, and we actually still know it to be true. Because we know that there is generational trauma that parents do pass on. Some of the trauma that they have endured comes out in their family. And we do know that there is collective guilt societal collective responsibility. We believe that that still exists. We see evidence of it. That all together we bear responsibility for the ways in which some people have been trodden underfoot. But at the same time that we still believe that, we also believe in personal responsibility, don't we? I mean, we're from the pilgrim stock. We definitely believe in personal responsibility. So we reject blaming others for what's in our own heart. At least we think we do. This came out in the news this week. 
when we saw a young man who blamed women, and particularly Asian women, for his inability to reconcile the teachings of his evangelical Christian faith about sexuality and what he actually felt. And he blamed others to the point of killing them. Personal responsibility is something that we hold on to and we know we need to. And so here we are in, in our time <clears throat> believing both of these things that Jeremiah referred to about 3,000 years ago. What he told the people was that the Spirit of God is within you so that you in your conscience know what is right and what is not. The ways of God written on your heart become a part of you so that when we, God's people, are confronted with harsh realities, there is a presence, a voice, a conscience within. And what Jeremiah says, and he's, he actually makes a reference to the Ten Commandments, he says this is not rules written on, on stone. And we would say it's not the rules written on paper in a book. But these things are in your heart. Where you know that compassion is what is right within us presence of love and a presence of hope. A presence that says the right thing is to respect other people. A presence that says we are all God's children. That God looks at each one of us in the eye and says you are beloved. And then tells us to go and do likewise, to look others in the eye and say, you are beloved. Amen. For those of you here in the sanctuary, I invite you to take the black hymnal, number 2238. We're going to sing verses 1 and 5. If you are at home, the words will show up on your screen. Please stand.
I invite you now into a time of listening within and joining me in prayer, which will conclude with the New Zealand version of the Lord's Prayer printed there in your bulletin. Let us pray. Holy God, we long to hear your voice clearly and distinctly, but sometimes, oftentimes, that is not our experience. And we thank you for this word of grace that affirms that you are written within our hearts, and that we, too, can share that assurance as we go through our walk in life. We are deeply humbled to be your beloved ones. Help us to forgive ourselves for sometimes that's the hardest part. And help us to forgive others so that they too might know that they are your beloved ones. We remember this day, your son Jesus and his determination to teach all of his followers that they can pray to you as intimately as he does, as we share in these words. O oh, Creator God, ancient, ancient of days, days, may your love be done on earth, earth in time, time as it is in eternity. eternity. Give, give all, all of us each day, each day the bread, bread we need, need and hope to all who hunger for, for your life. life. And as, as we, we share, share our bread, bread along, the way, along the way, pardon us the times we've broken, broken faith, forgive our lack of loyalty and love, and, love, and move, move us quickly, quickly to forgive forgiveness when wrongs are done to us. Do not, not abandon, abandon us, us in the time of hard testing. testing. Save us from the evils every incarnation. From, from the, the powers, powers that possess, possess our, spirits our spirits and our, and our structures, forever bind us to your liberating, liberating joy. For you alone are God, God of grace, grace and glory, and brought rock of our, our redemption. redemption. Let, let it be so, God. Let it be so. Amen. And now I invite you to stand for the benediction. You beloved people of God, go among your weak, knowing that you have this message written on your heart, that you are God's people of compassion and respect and love, and people of hope. Go in peace. Amen.